Welcome to the next video on remainders. As promised in the last video, let's study the concept of cyclicity of remainders. So let's return to the previous question, where we had to find the remainder when 2 raised to the power of 1059 is divided by 7. Now when 2 is divided by 7, we get a remainder of 2. When 2 square is divided by 7, we get a remainder of 4. When 2 cube is divided by 7, we get a remainder of 1. When 2 raised to the power of 4 is divided by 7, we get a remainder of 1 into 2, that is 2. Now obviously, 2 raised to the power of 4 is 16. 16 when divided by 7 gives a remainder of 2. But here we have used the concept of remainder theorem. 2 cube when divided by 7 gives a remainder of 1. 2 raised to the power of 4 is equal to 2 cube into 2. So it gives a remainder of 1 into 2 when divided by 7. Now when 2 raised to the power of 5 is divided by 7, again by using the concept of remainder theorem, we'll get a remainder of 2 into 2, that is 4. When 2 raised to the power of 6 is divided by 7, we get a remainder of 4 into 2, that is 8, which again gives a remainder of 1, because 8 when divided by 7 gives a remainder of 1. So we can see that when powers of 2 are divided by 7, we get a repeating cycle of remainders. And what is the cycle that we have got here? It is obviously 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1, and again 2, 4, 1, and so on. So in this case, the cycle has a periodicity or cyclicity of 3, as the remainders are 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1, and so on. So 2 raised to the power 3k plus 1, when divided by 7, gives a remainder of 2. 2 raised to the power 3k plus 2, when divided by 7, gives a remainder of 4. And 2 raised to the power of 3k, when divided by 7, gives a remainder of 1. This is what the concept of cyclicity is. So in general, we can say that if a number a raised to the power n is divided by d, the remainder repeats in a cycle with cyclicity less than or equal to d minus 1 for different values of n. That is, when successive powers of a number a is divided by n, the remainder repeats in a cycle with cyclicity which is less than or equal to d minus 1. In our case, when different powers of 2 were divided by 7, the remainder repeated in a cyclicity of 3. The remainders were 2, 4, 1, then again 2, 4, 1, then again 2, 4, 1, and so on. So in general, when different powers of a is divided by any number d, the remainder will repeat in a cycle, and the maximum value of the cyclicity can be equal to d minus 1. Now in our question, we need to find the remainder when 2 raised to the power of 1059 is divided by 7. Now 1059 when divided by 3 gives a remainder of 0. How do we know this? We just find the digit sum of 1059, which is 1 plus 5 plus 9, that is 15, that is 6, which is divisible by 3. So 1059 is divisible by 3. So 2 raised to the power of 1059 can be written as 2 raised to the power of 3k. And as we have already found out, numbers of the form 2 raised to the power of 3k when divided by 7 give a remainder of 1. So when 2 raised to the power 1059 is divided by 7, we get a remainder of 1. Now let's do an example, which we attempted in the previous video using the concept of cyclicity. Find the remainder when 25 raised to the power 25 is divided by 9. In this case, we need to find the cyclicity when powers of 25 are divided by 9. So let's start with 25. 25 when divided by 9 gives a remainder of 7. 9 into 2 is 18, so 25 when divided by 9 gives a remainder of 7. Or otherwise, as we have studied in the divisibility chapter, to find the remainder of any number when it is divided by 9, we simply find the digit sum of the number. So the digit sum of 25 is 7. So when divided by 9, 25 gives a remainder of 7. Now 25 square, when divided by 9, gives a remainder of 7 into 7. Again, we have got this using the concept of remainder theorem. 
7 into 7 is 49. The digit sum of 49 is 13, that is 4. So 49 when divided by 9 gives a remainder of 4. So 25 square when divided by 9 also has a remainder of 4. Now 25 cube when divided by 9 gives a remainder of 4 into 7, that is 28, which has a remainder of 1. 25 raised to the power of 4 when divided by 9 gives a remainder of 1 into 7, that is 7. So our cycle has start repeating, right? The first remainder that we got was 7. And now in the fourth power, we have again got a remainder of 7. So the cycle when powers of 25 are divided by 9 is 7, 4, 1, 7, 4, 1 and so on. Again, the cyclicity is 3. So 25 raised to the power of 3k plus 1 when divided by 9 will give remainder 7. 25 raised to the power of 3k plus 2 when divided by 9 will give remainder 4. 25 raised to the power 3k when divided by 9 will give a remainder of 1. Now 25 raised to the power 25 can be written as 25 raised to the power of 3k plus 1. So when divided by 9, it will give a remainder of 7. So as you can see, cyclicity of remainders seems like an awesome way to find remainders. And it really is. However, cyclicity of remainders has a serious drawback. You already know that for any divisor d, its remainders can take values between 0 and d minus 1. Now in case d is large, then theoretically, we can have a case where the cycle is too large. In our first example, d was 7, right? We were dividing the number by 7. So the remainder can theoretically have values between 0 and 6. And hence, the maximum cyclicity when any number is divided by 7 can be 7, right? As we saw, for 2 raised to the power of 1059, the cyclicity was 3 when it was divided by 7. Similarly, in the second example, maximum value of cyclicity can be 9. And in our case, for 25 raised to the power 25, the cyclicity was 3. Now let's do one more question using the concept of cyclicity in order to understand its limitation. Find the remainder when 2 raised to the power of 65 is divided by 25. Now here we can see that 25 is a larger number and theoretically the maximum cyclicity that 25 can have is 25. So let's see what the cyclicity is in case of 2 raised to the power of 65. Now when 2 divided by 25 gives a remainder of 2, 2 square when divided by 25 gives a remainder of 4, 2 cube when divided by 25 gives a remainder of 8, 2 raised to the power of 4 when divided by 25 gives a remainder of 16, 2 raised to the power of 5 when divided by 25 gives a remainder of 32, that is 7. Now 2 raised to the power of 6 when divided by 25 gives a remainder of 7 into 2, that is 14. 2 raised to the power 7 when divided by 25 gives a remainder of 14 into 2, that is 28, that is 3. Till now, the remainder hasn't repeated, right? We have got values 2, 4, 8, 16, 7, 14, 3. It hasn't repeated till now. And the cyclicity method is becoming very time consuming. In fact, the cyclicity here is 20. So you will have to do these steps 20 times. Now obviously, wasting so much time on one simple question does not make any sense. And this is why we are going to study another method of finding remainders. This method is called Euler's method. And it is a very very useful and a very very powerful method of finding remainders. But before that, I would like to cover some more topics. This is because I would be teaching many useful concepts related to Euler's method. Euler's method is helpful to us not just in finding remainders, but it also finds application in other types of questions. So before studying Euler's theorem, in the next video, I will finish some other important concepts first.